Hi, jewelry makers. So we're on to our next uh, advent demo today. Uh, so we're actually on, thank you very much, Michael. We are on day 12. So we can go to the advent calendar and have a look and see what's in the, in the little box. So if we find 12, there we go. And I'm gonna take this out and let's have a look what's in here. Oh, so exciting. This, I love, love, love this one. Let's open it up and you have the most beautiful charm in here. So we've got a lovely sterling silver and turquoise charm. Absolutely beautiful. Now this I would say is you can, I mean you could just put that on, on chain and that would be an absolutely gorgeous pendant as it is stretchy bracelets it's going to work really well with um anything like that you know it, it could be the the most simple uh but probably most beautiful piece of jewelry you could make and just have it like that uh but that would be an incredibly dull uh demo if i were going to do that for you so what i thought would be really nice is to incorporate it with perhaps another um some wire work uh, and another really, really popular motif, so our butterfly. So we're going we're gonna to make this out of, um, we're going to do two versions. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do a base metal one first, and then we're going to do our sterling silver version. Uh, and we're going to make it into a butterfly ring, and we're going to add the charm, so you can see there. So it's sort of like by its antennae. So I'm going to pop that to the side. Make sure I don't lose it. And we'll come back to that. So if we have a look, um, and we'll have a look at uh, the, 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 some of the tools and materials that we're gonna use to do the project. So if we look at um, wire work wise, so I'm going to, um, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna do it with, the, uh, with some uh, plated, some base metal wire. I'm gonna have a practice with that and get some of my sizing in and so I've got a good idea before I then go on to my precious metal where obviously you want le much less <coughs> wastage. Um, so we're gonna have a practice with the, the base metal and I've got a, uh, a one mil there. You could have a go with uh, a 0.8 if you wanted to, whichever your preference is, but you need a structural wire. And so you can see I've got the same there in my sterling silver. I'm also gonna work with um, a finer wire. So I've got a 0.4. So this is my sterling silver. I'm going to work with that. We've obviously got the lovely charm that's come out of the, the advent calendar. And then I've got a couple of um, sort of graduating in size uh, spacer beads there. If you, if you want to sort of fill the wings with something. So we'll see uh, where, where they fit into the design as well. Tools wise, <clears throat> I've, got, uh, I've got a ring mandrel. I'm going to work with my uh, step bail making pliers. Uh, I've got sort of like a standard round nose pliers, I've got some chain nose pliers, and I've got my flesh cutters. I'm also going to work with, um, especially, so if you want to do it with your, your sterling silver wire, I'm going to ball the ends of um, some, of the, uh, some of the wires. So I've got my torch, I've got some uh, reverse action tweezers, pot of water, and then different, uh, I've got a polishing cloth and sort of like a, a foam emery, emery stick there. What's really nice when you're, um, when you're creating and working with um, sterling silver and we've got some nice curves as well is I'm gonna actually put some, um, I might put a little bit of texture on uh, and I'm certainly gonna hammer some of it to flatten it out. So I've got um, quite a lightweight hammer and then I've got a little, my little anvil, so a little steel block there. And that is pretty much it for, um, for tools and the materials you're going to use. I'm just going to move some of these out of the way. And we'll get our work. Make sure that I'm just going to pop that over here so that I know exactly where it is. Okay, so. The first thing I'm going to do, and I'll show you how um, they all start to look, and we can see the pieces that we're going to make. So 
like I say, I'm going to start and do the design. And what we want to do is we're going to do one, um, one continuous piece of structural wire with this. So by doing that, it means that we don't have to add in any other um, structural wires. Hopefully that's going to be make it really, really strong, hard wearing uh, as a ring. And really all we need to think about is whatever we do on one side uh, of sort of like a central line means we're just going to do the same on the other. So hopefully keep it quite simple as well. So this, this, this design works really well as well, whether you scale up, you scale down, uh, whatever your sort of your style is. So if I sort of show you what these are going to look like. So uh, the, the base for our ring, you can see, so we're going to make the, we're going to make the butterfly and you can see in here. So we've got two different uh, sorts here. So we've got our, our base metal and that's actually in a 0 0.8. And then we've got our sterling silver version which is in a one mil. So again, if I take these ones here, same design, but we've got a different sizes on here. So both were with uh, sterling silver wire and both in uh, a 0 0.8. So it's just in it, whichever suits you of whether you want to have sort of like a, a larger butterfly or you go with a little dainty butterfly, but it both it works really well, whichever, whichever way you go. Okay, so our starting point, I'll move these out of the way. And I'm going to work with, so I've got here my base metal, I've got a one mil silver plated wire. Okay. So to make sort of like the larger size, so you see something like that. So probably looking at about a couple of centimetres uh, in total here. So to do that, I am going to take, I'm probably going to go with about 30 centimetres or so of my wire. And we're going to have a couple of goes at this. So you'll really, really get the, get how you form it. So I'm going to make it in the base metal and then I'll do it in the, the, um, the sterling. This is a good way, a good gauge of um, understanding how wires work, the way you need to, uh, how much wire you need for certain areas in a design. And like I say, so that when you finally go onto your uh, sterling silver wire, that you've got the confidence, um, you know, you know, you understand how you're gonna be forming it. So where we're actually starting, and so hopefully this will make sense, if we sort of like separate this out a little bit, our starting point is going to be, sorry, if I just bring this one in, you'll be able to see a little bit more. So. Our starting point here is going to be this section. And this goes all the way down and then into the wings, into the ring shank. And then we're going to come all the way back up through and finish at the antennae. So all of this is going to be formed. The butterfly and the ring shank is all one piece of wire. So lovely and strong. Okay, so I'm going to find my midpoint okay so i'm going to find the, the midpoint in here okay you can measure it as well if you wanted to but you need to have sort of like roughly half and half okay so i'm going to work at first with my chain nose pliers mid at the midpoint i'm going to start and bend i want quite a sharp angle here and again, if you wanted to have like variations of this, what you could do is you could, you don't have to have a straight body like mine, you could have it, you could leave it like that if you wanted to, perhaps weave in there. So there's lots and lots, I'm gonna show you the, the basics and you know, there's lots of variations in the design that you could make it your own. So I'm now gonna squeeze that. Now by squeezing that in my pliers, you can see so it's, it's nice and neat. We've got um, your two thickness of wire there. And just that, that, by working that wire like that, that is now super, super strong. Okay, so you can see by doing that, it's crossed over. I need to make sure I want to have it, that it could be a nice design again if you want that twist in there, but I wanna just swap it back so that this wire, they don't sort of cross over. So I'm just gonna go in and give that a bit of a curve just with my fingers and just encourage it so it's going back the right way. Okay. So my next move now is going to determine how large this is going to be. So if you wanted to make a really teeny one, the next move I'd do with my step bow makers, I'd make sure that it was sort of going up here. This one, I'm gonna sort of come probably about, maybe just over 
centimeter or so here. I'm going to start and just bring that out. So now I'm looking to form, we're looking at quite simple uh, lines with the wire work that actually doesn't, it's not filled with lots of weaving. It's basically like a line drawing. So what you want to think about with this is, what we want to try and do is, is keep all of the lines of that wire so it's looking pretty even and symmetrical on either side. So to do that, I'm going to form the wire around a mandrel rather than do it freehand. And this is where your bail makers come um, into their own. If you don't have bail makers, what you could do is you could look at other, other mandrels that you've got that are round. So yes, you could work with, um, if you've got your, you're gonna do a small version and you want to work with your round nose pliers, or if maybe you've got different pens or anything that's, that's, that's circular, cylindrical that you could wrap around. Okay, so the first thing, so if we look at where we are on the, the making of it, so we're coming into this curve here. Okay, so I'm going to hold the two wires here and they will pretty much stay together because that, that we've work hardened them. I'm going to come down and pop my, pop the wire in between the bail, bail making pliers and just start to roll up. Okay, so you can see here, I'm going to do the same on that side just to get that wire out of the way for a minute. Okay, so I've gone around sort of the second largest mandrel here okay so i'm now going to bring that wire and i come over the top and again just coming in so it's almost like a right angle here i swap my pliers now i'm just going to bring that in just ever so slightly i might just actually reduce it down just a little bit so you can see I'm just holding there and just pushing in and that's gonna reduce that loop. Okay, so I've now got my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna hold here and you're essentially doing the action that you did here almost like back on itself, but it's going to be uh, on the side this time. So I'm holding here and I'm gonna come take the wire over the top. So what it's gonna do, it gives us, we know it's a thickness of, of two wires there, but from the front, it's gonna look like one. So you can see it's coming sitting like that. And I'm gonna give that a pinch down. So I'm gonna hold here and pinch there and get that in line. So we're looking something like that. And while I can still access all of that, I might just give that another pinch there. Straighten it up if you need to so you can't see the, the wire underneath. I'm going to move back to my bail making pliers. I'm just going to pop that in here. Now I'm going to then take this around that larger, so the next size up, and I'm coming all the way around. Start to form that circle. So now when I come and I've nearly formed the all of the circle with this wire, I don't want to make I want, don't want it coming over the top of the, the design, I want it to go underneath because remember this wire is then going to form that ring shank. So it's coming underneath, so I'm going to carry on forming it and bring round at the back. And every time I sort of go, with, with, the, with the wire work, every time I form a shape, I then take the pliers away so to have a look at it, to see how it's sitting. So I can already see what I probably need to do again, because I reduce, actually reduce that one, I'm going to go in and just reduce that a little bit so that it goes, it sits a little bit lower. I think that looks better. Okay, so remember, we're looking for that symmetry. Simple lines, so what we're gonna do, whatever we did on this side, we're then gonna do on the, on the other side. So I'm gonna go back on here. I'm going to start and bring round, and you can see when I'm when I'm working it, I'm moving the entire piece. Lots and lots of different different directions. Okay, so remember, so that we can get that nice tight bend, we need to come up over the top. I'm going to drop that down, so we reduced it ever so slightly. So I want to try, look at it, look at it from all angles, see whether we need to reduce it. We want it to be the same sort of size as that one. So I think I could do reducing it a little bit more. So again, I'm just gonna tighten that, bring that round, 
look at it from the sort of the way it's going to sit and I'm going to hold and remember we're going to do so this time we're going to come over the top so I'm holding with my chain nose pliers try and get it so it's sort of lining up with the one that we've got on the other side and I come over over the top there and again we're going to give that a pinch so making sure that it's sitting like this give that a pinch there straighten up and again then we're going to come back with our bail making pliers so I'm going to start on that larger one bring round and remember then this time how we went so this time we go underneath so again let's bring that round let's get that larger curve and then we can make it smaller so you can see I'm just swapping, swapping the whichever mandrel I'm working with. I'm just going to turn it and stop for a minute so I can see how that's looking to the next one. Pop it back on the mandrel and bring that in line there. So again, let's bring that in and even those up. So if I want to pull that down a little bit, I just pull on that the wires that are left. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take my ring mandrel <coughs> and then we're going to use the wires that are left to form the ring shank. So when you're doing this, um, what I would say is you're going to get a little bit of, especially with, because this is a quite a springy, it's a hard plated metal. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably going to get a little bit of sort of like a, a bounce back jump uh, from when I uh, form it at a certain size. It's probably going to go a little bit bigger. So if anything, maybe go a little bit smaller and then um, you'll probably get it to, to be the right size. So I'm going to hold it on here. My thumb is going to go and support the wire work that I've done. I'm going to start and push and form that all the way around. So I'm making sure that the wires are sitting parallel to each other and crossing over and bringing that round. Okay, so you can see, so when I take my finger off, I'm, when I'm not putting pressure and forcing it around, can you see how it springs back? So it would mean that it would actually go to a little, be a little bit larger. So take that into account. So what I'm going to do now, I, I'm actually going to, I'm going to bend that and come up into the wing there. If you can, avoid getting big bends in at that point, but we can shape that and it's certainly easier when you work with the sterling silver and it'll be easier if you work on a, on a lower gauge. So I've actually come through the wings here and I'm going to now pop it back onto the ring mandrel. So I can bring that in and hold that there. So I've just got my finger at the back supporting those two wires, making sure that they are sort of sort of the size that I want it to be. I'm going to start now. So I'm bringing it, holding here, supporting the butterfly, and then I'm going to tighten in there. I'm going to come through. Now this bit, I'm going to take my chain nose pliers just to help push this through. So I'm taking the the wire and at this point now it's getting this is a one mil like I say it's quite a hard wire so unless you've got very very strong fingers you might need to use your pliers here and I'm working very very close to where I want to wrap it around there I'm going to hold there so I'm going to do the same on the other side so let's start and bring that in so tightening it up take that end back through the wing and then I've got a bend there so I'm now going to start with my chain nose pliers just to encourage that around. So now I'm going to tighten here so I'm pushing and squeezing that first loop which will in turn work harden it as well so that when I pull there hopefully the bit of wire that moves is the rest of this length there. And you can see as I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to keep that natural curve of the wire. So I've got two wraps that side, two wraps that side. Okay. 
and then I'm going to come in and cut there. So let's get rid of those. Okay. So what you've now got is that complete ring and it's entirely up to you whether you go in then and I can go back and just squeeze that together so you can see I've got my chain nose pliers at the side and I'm squeezing that to give me so that it just sort of lines up here less of almost like shoulders but you can see because we've, we've sort of gone back and forth on ourselves with the ring that's that's kept its shape so you can see there so that that was that was my one mil wire one mil wire and it was it's a, a copper core but it's it's base metal but I, I pretty much you know I understand how I need to go back and forth uh, and sort of pretty much about the length that I need for the wires and it's easier than when I, I've made it once with the um, the base metal to then go on to my sterling silver so and we'll see how the sterling silver works differently so I'm going to take some of the sterling silver so remember we're going to use as much of this as we can and we'll see how this handles differently okay so I'm just going to get rid of those kinks just while I've got the um, while I've got the rest of the the wire on the uh, sort of in my hand here I can just pull this through now what you'll see you see some of the it's sort of oxidizing there you just wash your hands afterwards or you can use if you've got the if you've got the cloth or you've got nylon jaw pliers you can just bring that through but we want to try and we don't want to waste too much of that wire but I want to get a couple of those kinks out okay so again I'm going to go for about, about, about 30 centimeters or so I'll snip that off. So again, either measure or it's probably better on your sterling silver so that you don't waste any to, to measure it. I'm going to refine that midpoint. I'm going to come and bend and pinch together here. Okay, then I'm going to pull these out. And I'm going to go to my bail makers. I'm going to roll that in. I'm actually going to drop down and we'll do a more delicate one now. So remember now we come over the top. Swap my pliers, turn it around, and this time remember come over the top now so that we're then going into that top larger wing. Squeeze down, bring that in line. My step bow makers again, roll it round. But this time, because remember this is gonna form the ring shank, so we go underneath. I'm really gonna roll that in a little bit. So that's now in position. So the next one, I'm going to just encourage it out, just start the bend, make sure I get the right mandrel, and roll around. So we'll do the other side. All the time making sure that sort of we're looking at distances here. And so you can see I've made that it's a little bit of a straight edge, so I'm going to need to go back in, really go around that mandrel over the top. See how it's looking. Move it round, pinch down, and move to my next larger mandrel. Start to bring that. So remember, we went over the top last time. This time, we're going to take that underneath. I'm just going to go onto that larger one just to get that curve started. So you can see, I'm just all I'm doing every time is I'm sort of swapping 
flipping the bail makers over so that I can get the size that I want. You can see we're looking so it's much smaller now. So I can already see that I'd say this wing is a little bit smaller than this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to hold here and push down a little bit to reduce that one. Because I don't really want to take too much away from that ring shank and that's going to sit something like that. Okay, so now again, so we're going to come take the, um, the ring mandrel. I'm going to hold and start to go around. And with this one as well, I'm also going to just, with my thumb, just form it so it's starting to be, so not so much of a flat butterfly. I'm going to bring that round. Okay. So again, I need to make sure I'm just holding it. I'm going to bring that in. So I'm going to take it off now just before I formed it into the full ring shank. So I'm just going to take these. So I'm just sort of like bringing it down, I'm not trying to put angles in. I'm trying to come up through that wing there. And I'm going to do the same to this one. So just get it in the position. Don't worry about properly forming it yet. And then pop it back onto your ring mandrel. Because if you don't pop it on there and just pull those through, that's going to give mean that you get sort of angles that you don't want. So now, when if I pull through, even if it's the, not the ring size that I want, it will just be pulling around um, a round surface, so I shouldn't get too many kinks or angles that I don't want. Okay, so I'm going to sort of try and get it so it's roughly the sort of size I want, but remember, it's going to spring back a little bit, so if anything, maybe do it slightly smaller than you want. I'm going to start and bring that round. So make sure that the wires haven't crossed over and start to curve that round. I'm going to take the end and bring up through. Give that a bit of a wiggle. And then I'm really going into where it's looping around here to tighten it up. And I'm squeezing that. And again, bring that in. I'm not going to trim that one off yet. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. So making sure that it's, it's still sitting. So you can already see how it's starting to twist over that one. So I need to reposition that and get that back there. So I'm holding it firmly, this finger here, and bringing it through. So remember we're turning and we're turning out. So we sort of that the wrap is going towards the outside of the butterfly, not the inside, so that it meets up there. So we get that nice curve. So again, so I'm going to bring this in, take that end back through the wing and feed it through. And with my sterling silver, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not squeezing really, really hard in my pliers. I don't want to, I, I'm just it's guiding it rather than actually uh, marking, uh, marking the metal in any way. So again, so I'm going to really, really pull through now. I'm tightening that. And let's bring this through. I'm going to just take it off the ring mandrel for a minute so that I can see all of it. So I can already see, it feels like it was a bit loose because I haven't actually tightened that loop around the wing. So I'm just going to go in where I can and just tighten that. So I'm just pinching there and that will tighten there. So I can pop that back on now. And let's bring that, turn it out a little bit and bring it so it's sitting like that. Then remember, I'm going to come in. We want that to so that we haven't got such a big gap here. So I'm just going to come in and pinch that together. And that's going to shorten that gap there. OK, so I know that it's, I've got enough of a curve here. I'm just going to get those so they're pointing away and I'm going to get an idea of. So we can already see this one is longer. But I now need to, if you are going to, to ball the ends of these, we need to allow, uh, probably, you probably lose, I would say, uh, almost maybe getting onto four to five millimeters, depending on the size of the ball that you're gonna make here. So I think what I could do is I can 
definitely cut a little bit off this one. Obviously, keep your scraps there. I could maybe cut even a little bit more. Depends how uh, long you want your antennae to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this off. Move these out of the way. And what we're going to do is, before we've got... Um, I'm just going to tighten that one up a little bit as well. Before we put any of the finer detail on, this is where we're going to uh, we're going to uh, sort of work on the antennae a bit. Okay, so I'm going to get the torch. So I'm going to move this over. And let's get the torch in. Okay. So what I want to think about is when I'm working with my torch, my torch is going to point and I'm going to be, because I'm looking at the antennae, naturally I'm just going to be focused on that area because that's the area that I'm looking at for the, the silver to change shape. But what's really important is that I almost look beyond the flame as well uh, to make sure that when I'm balling that, if I have it in here and I'm actually looking, if I just get a little bit of wire so that we can look at the direction of it. The area that I'm going to be balling is here at the end of the an antennae. But if I angle it in a certain way, I'm actually going to get the ring shank as well, which I don't want to do. So before you sort of like set your set the torch up, really just take, think about that direction of the flame. Where is it going to be? So I'm actually going to move these so they're slightly, they're not as curved because I can go in and curve them afterwards. Okay. So now when I have it, if I have it like that, ideally that flame shouldn't go anywhere near the ring shank. So this could be famous last words. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to set the torch up and I'm also, so the areas that I'm going to be uh, going for are these two here. I'm just going to make sure that they are set up in the, in the tweezers. Okay, so if I, and remember we're working with quite a thick wire here. So it might take a little bit of time. Get a bit of heat in, and there we go. We can start to see that's turn it over. And so, what you know, how I like to make excuses for for my workmanship in um, demos. But what what you'll find is, in a very very bright light like this, it'll be difficult to see um, to see the flame you're working with. So what I'd say is, if you are going to have a go with that. I mean, we don't have it as, as, as bright, sort of go, um, so it's a little bit darker because then you'll really be able to see uh, the different parts of the flame and you'll be able to see where your wire is sitting in it uh, and it, you'll be able to see the glow of the wire. So not just me making excuses, that's a genuine, uh, a genuine plus. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. So I've, you can see I've quenched that in the water and we can have a look at what we've got now. So if I sort of show you Let's have a luxury pop it here and we can see yeah so we can see so it's reduced it by a little bit and what we can do is we can shape those I wouldn't make them particularly any any more longer than that but you can see you've got the little bits there so I'm going to swap over to this one now Okay, so what we're going to look at is the other things that we're going to do to it now. So I'm still going to use some of my pliers. We're going to start adding a little bit of detail. So what I know I want to do is I know I want to add a little bit of um, either texture or certainly want to sort of give this a bit more shape. So we know we've got that one mil flat wire, but what I'm also going to do is then I'm going to come in and I want to add a little bit of detail and angles to it. So I'm just working on the end here. 
coming from the back. I'm going to start. I'm just actually going to move. I'm going to sw just swap my board over for a minute. There we go. Let's see how this works. That's actually quite noisy as well, isn't it? Right. I'm going to pop it back here. You can make as much noise as you want when you're at home, I'm assuming. So let's, let's bring that there. There we go. So it's turned over and I'm really going in and hammering sort of like the outer circle of it. And you can already see how that is starting to change shape from, from the one there. So let's look from the front. You can see it's giving that lovely angles and luster in there. So we'll go ahead and we'll do the other side. So again, just can move that out of the way. This is gonna do a couple of things. So aesthetically, it's gonna give it that, that the angles and the, and the luster, so it's gonna catch the light really nicely. Uh, and then also for function and practicality, it's gonna harden it. So it's gonna be really, really durable as well. So again, I'm gonna go in on that outer edge and hammer. So I'm hammering on the flat end And let's have a look. So I want to get that so it's quite even. Yeah, that's looking nice. Do the same on this one. So I'm going from the back just to hammer it on the outer edge. And do the same on this one. If you want to have it so you've got sort of like a bit more of um, like a dappled effect, so I'm going to turn it over from the front, turn the hammer over, and that's gonna give me, I'm not looking to change the shape too much, just to give it texture. And do the same on the other side. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've got now. Now any process that you do like that, chances are it's gonna change it slightly, so just remember, go back, rearrange what you need to. So I can already see with this one, I need to come in and just tighten that up so it's not gonna move as much, that antennae. And the same on this one. So I'm just tightening that up, going in, back in with my chain nose pliers. And I'm gonna come and move those out a little bit. I probably won't shape those until uh, right at the end. Okay, and I can also see, so I just need to bring that back in line a little bit and bring that over. What I can also do is just, so if I get that, I can then go in if I need to and just give that a bit of a tap as well. That's gonna form and hold the shape. Okay. So I'm just gonna start now. I'm gonna give this a bit of a, a polish and a buff up. So what you might find, I've done, oh, I think I've done it a little bit with this, but if we go back to this one, what you might find when you've done the, the balling of the um, antenna, you might get a lovely round ball here, but that top part, sometimes it happens that you might get just one little sharper point. So I'm just gonna go in so with the buffer and just go all the way around there. So I'll do that on this one. So you can see these buffers are really good in that especially the ones with the numbers, because they, you just follow the numbers and treat them in this, almost the same way as that you would with your nails. So file, file it so it's number one. So that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna get rid of any of those, uh, the, sort of any pitting or sharper edges and work into that, those little balls that I've created. And I'm doing this now because I don't want to put, add the charm or anything like that or any of the detail or the highly polished spaces yet. I want to do that while I can get to all of it without worrying about damaging anything else. And you can already start to see how these are buffing up really nicely. Okay, so again, pop your finger over and let's see how this is going to work. So I think I can come now on to uh, number two now. So what I, I am sort of having my finger, this finger underneath to support the area that I'm working. Just so that I sort of can control the shape a little bit. 
gonna go on to three. Let's bring that in. Yeah, they're coming up really nicely now. And it's worth spending the time, you know, you, you've got your precious metal here. And you've done a lovely job of, you know, making it so it looks nice and even. So just go in and buff those. Okay. So again, just going to move that out a little bit. See how it's looking. Okay. And again, now that it's, I can access all of it, I'm just going to go and start and give that a nice polish. We can polish it again once we've put out all the detail on, but at the moment, you can see, we don't have to worry about, we can be quite firm with it because it hasn't got any of the delicate detail on there. So I can really go in and give that a good polish. And you can see, so you can see the wings here, how that has, that has come up nicely. This one's a little bit dull. And I can give, go in and give that. And you'll really, you should be able to see that now that, that you know, when we did the, uh, the hammering and that dappled effect, you can see how that is starting to give you that extra glitter and shine on that bit compared to, we've still got lovely, that lovely effect with the angles, but it's nice to have when you're working with your, your precious metal like that. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep giving that a nice, buff and shine and the same for the ring shank as well so I can go like that pop my ring mandrel back in so I can already see that although it is it's holding its shape and it's actually it's it's nicely work hardened I do need to which is uh, which is fine I need to sort of secure it a little bit at the front so the the detail that we're going to add in at the front, so the finer wire, is going to do a couple of things. It's going to give us that decoration, but it's also going to stop it from, from moving out of shape. So what I want to do, I want to make sure that I'm 100% happy with the, the shape and how that structure is sitting before I start, start adding in fine detail. If, you're, uh, if you really, really like weaving, what you could do is you could do uh, rewatch. Uh, I think it was the ninth, the advent on the ninth, where we did quite a lot of uh, figure of eight weave, and you can absolutely do a figure of eight weave between these two wires if if you wanted to um, on the ring shank. So you could sort of go add in here, so you can see there, and then just go around there. So if you did want to do that and you want to look on YouTube, you can find that that demo there. So what I'm going to do now, when, once you've polished everything up, I'm now going to then look at adding some detail. So we need to remember we've got our lovely charm. So we're going to pop that in. And that's going to go somewhere around there. So something like that. So I'm just going to leave that off for the minute. I'm going to take some of my spacers. So I'm going to take a length of 0.4. Just cut that off. So obviously with our much finer gauge wire, we don't have to, we can, you know, we need to just be a little bit more careful. We can't sort of pull it and, and, and yank on it in the same way that we did uh, our structural wire. Just need to be quite careful with that. So I've probably got maybe, um, say maybe about 40 centimeters there of my 0.4. Okay, so it's not, you, you can do this in a number of different ways, but if we think about how we formed the butterfly so far, whatever we've had on one side, we've had on the other. So we could try and do the same there. Uh, so that's why I've sort of split the wire in half so that whatever I do on this side, I can then do the same on this side. So my starting point to anchor on is I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to take, let's pop one of the, I might have, um, I'm going to have a mid-size spacer, I think. We'll see how that, that looks there. So what I'd say when you're working with something like this is have a look of what you think uh, size-wise is going to work best. So 
I'm just going to get a couple of these out. I'm going to get a few of those out. So I'm quite happy with that as the sort of the central, the central point there. So I'm just going to open that up just a little bit so that it sits nicely in that gap. Okay, so I know I've got a good, the central, central part there. I'm going to come in and just bring through. So you're essentially using this 0.4, it's a bit like a needle and thread to now anchor, anchor any detail on. So I'm just going to hold that there. I'll do the same on the other side. So that now is fixed in place. So what we've got now is we've got two, uh, two lots of our 0.4 to add detail onto both sides of the butterfly. And what this will also do is this will then start to secure that, the butterfly to the ring shank as well. Okay, so I'm just going to start and take this. So I'm then going to actually add in my little charm there. Bring that in. So it's sitting like that. I'm going to come up and round and start to hand coil all the way just to give that top section of the wing a little bit of detail. I don't want to cover up too much of the, the dappling that I've got. But what I'm essentially looking to do is to move this wire so it's coming far enough over so that when I add the spaces in, I can then come back to that central point there. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my largest and then I'm going to go smaller and then I'm going to go smaller still. I'm going to bring that in. So now I'm going to bind this. So I'm coming over the top. Make sure that it doesn't kink. And then secure that in. So you just need to sort of hold and encourage the spacers so they're sitting in the place that you want them to come up through. I'm going to have a couple of wraps across there. So just bring that through. So you can see this, this is the fine wire is just acting like that needle and thread. I can bind across. So I could add in more if I wanted to or come back up through I'm going to leave that for the moment. So we're going to come and do the other side. So remember, whatever we did on that side, we'll do on the other side as well. And you could get, depending on how many spaces you've got, you could fill all the, you know, all the wings or just have one, one lot there. It's entirely up to you. So I'm going to come through. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have a look at this and I think the most sensible thing I'm not what I'm going to do I'm actually going to rather than doing it that using this wire thinking about I'm just going to have another three spaces I'm not going to fill it too much with the spaces so I'm going to change that slightly I think what's going to actually work better I'm going to leave this wire for a minute I'm going to leave that up there I'm going to take this one and I'm going to use this one to come up there on the other side so this is the reverse so rather than going from large to small on the wire I need to do the reverse now so I'm going to go I'm going to come just up through here so it's sort of coming off at the same angle and do the reverse now so I want small medium and large and I think that sits better. So I'm going to just use that, 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 all of that wire there. And I'm going to come through here. So remember, we want this wire coming. Can you see, so rather than I've come this side of, the, of this wrap rather than this side, because then I can, that can get lost into this section here. So I'm then going to take that out of the way and wrap 
around there. So we're on the last few minutes now, so I'm just going to bring that in. So that has ended perfectly there with this wire, so I can get rid of this one in a minute, which means I've got all of the other wire then, this one that we didn't use on that side, so I can go in and snip that off. And I know that's going to be secure because it's a single wrap around a single wire. So just go in and tuck that in. So let's move that out of the way. So now that has left us, we've got the detail in the, in the wing, which means now I can go in and shape those antennae. So I'm just going to bring that in there. So I'm going to slide on that charm. Now to lock that in place, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just bring that in. So I'm going to hold this wire and I come and I'm, what I'm going to do to lock that in, so if I left it like that, like you saw, so I did put it on there and it dropped off because we've got an open end here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of a figure of eight weave just to lock that in place. So it's sitting in here, we'll still have nice movement. But I'm going to come down and wrap around that first, that top antennae. And I'm going to come in making sure that, that it's, it's caught into that section of the, the ring. And I'm going to come and wrap around. So I'm going to go once, twice around the other antennae. Come up in between and wrap around. Just make sure that that's pushing. Just do one wrap at a time. Take it slowly because remember it's sort of tapering down so it'll want to sort of come away from the, the previous wrap. And bring round, up in between. So remember that figure of eight. If you didn't see the one on the ninth, remember it's, it's that that cross section would look like an eight or an infinity symbol. See where I've gone? So I've gone round once and twice there. So you only need to go do a few, and I'm going to stop at that point there because I still want the, some of the antennae to shape around. Remember, best place to stop because we've got a single wrap around a single structural wire, so we know that's going to hopefully be secure. So tuck that in. That now has locked in that charm there. Still nice movement with it, but it's locked it in there. I can then come and just really go in and shape those antennae now. So I'm just holding the entire piece and shaping it and bring that in. Okay, so we can see now how this is sitting. Pop it back on the, the ring mandrel. So I can go give that a bit more of a pinch if I needed to, just to, you can see, so nothing is moving in that, that butterfly now, but if I wanted to sort of reduce that as I did at the beginning, I can then go, so I might decide I'm gonna have, now if I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, if I go in and I start hammering like this, you can see, so I'm working on that, that side to give it that dappled look, that will actually, enlarge it a little bit so if you try if you've got to this point and it's a bit tight and you can't sort of just squash it down sort of encourage it and, and enlarge it like that if you go in with your hammer and texture that's going to make it and enlarge it a little bit so i'm going to take it like that and turn it over and do the same on this side. So if we have a look now. You can start to see there is our really pretty butterfly ring. So you can decide however, however large you want that to be. You can see how they work really, really prettily depending on the size that you make. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed that jewelry makers and I'll, um, I'll see you next week for another advent demo. So yeah, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. I'll see you soon.